Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Footprints, interesting talks. Hopefully your glass is half full rather than half empty. And as you all know, you can top it back up no matter where you are in life. Hopefully you've had a good two weeks since we last had our chat. Today we're back here today. I'm going to talk about a chemical called dopamine. Dopamine, really, really, really very useful chemical stroke drug that's released into the system and helps us in many, 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 many ways. I mean, lots of people have heard about dopamine and lots of other chemicals that are feel-good chemicals or motivational chemicals that are released into our system. But today we're going to start with dopamine. And over the next couple of weeks, in between maybe other talks, I'll introduce you to the other chemicals that are released into our system. But today we're going to start with dopamine. So do like, share and leave comments. Share with your friends, subscribe, hit that notification button. Let's keep this channel growing. It has been growing over the last couple of weeks since I've been away. But let's keep it going. It's an ongoing process. Just like self-learning. It's a never destination that you reach. It's a continual process of learning all the time while we're still here on the planet. So let's get onto dopamine. Now dopamine is a drug, chemical, that was released when we were 300,000 years ago in our systems to help our ancestors, hunter-gatherers, to go out and hunt, to go out and forage for food, to look for shelter, and to set fires to keep themselves warm, which is what they did. Now, all of those tasks are very challenging. They didn't want to do it, just like how there's lots of tasks in 2025 that we don't want to do, which I'm going to come on to at a later stage. So they didn't want to do this, but dopamine helped them to achieve these goals. Now, dopamine is a feel-good chemical. It's a motivational chemical. It's a neurotransmitter. That's its correct terminology. But we we'll just call it a drug at the moment or a chemical. So, you know, this is where we are at. We're not trying to be highfalutin, too clever. I want this for everybody so everybody can get to use dopamine for their own advantage. So it's a slow-release chemical that can take up to four hours to hit its peak. And again, it comes down very, very slowly. It's primarily there to help us survive as a human being, as a species. Anything you do to help survive your survival or that of the species, dopamine would like it and it will give you your rewards. So tasks that we might have done, which I've just stated, hunting, gathering, going out, foraging for food. Those were tasks that nobody really wanted to do. But with the help of dopamine, it became pleasurable because dopamine release and it gives you you that feel good factor. People take cannabis, alcohol, scroll through their phones, watch pornography, buy spy and shop online nowadays for that instant spike of dopamine. But I'm going to come to what happens when you have an instant spike of dopamine and you come back down to a base level and then a minus base level. You feel very, very bad. But to do things naturally that are conducive to the survival of humans, dopamine works very well with that. So... Dopamine is a feel-good factor chemical. It helps us to repeat the tasks that we find challenging. And the more we repeat them, the more effective, more easier it becomes and the more effective we become. Uh, Not saying, no, I can't be bothered on procrastination and all those kind of things that can come into our minds when we want to do a task that we know is difficult, but will be rewarding in the end. For example, reading a book. When you start reading a book that's interesting, the first five, 10 minutes, probably not going to be that great. But after a while, when you start to get what authors saying and you start to enjoy what they're saying, you start to feel dopamine levels rising in your system and you feel good. Another example would be going to the gym. I've used this as an example to one of my clients. Your first five, 10 minutes, especially the first five minutes, if you're on a treadmill, it's usually very, very difficult. But if, even if you're doing it on a regular basis, but then after a little while, your the, the dopamine kicks in and you start getting that good feeling and you start to feel a bit euphoric from doing something that you didn't want to do. Now you know you're doing it, you're getting into it and you're starting to get the feel good experience. Dopamine is kicking in. Now things we do for quick spikes with dopamine, which I quickly ran through a minute ago, was um, smoking cigarettes, alcohol, pornography, um, shopping online. Gambling is another one. Um, scrolling through our phone, which is a new one because obviously phones have not been around all the time, but they are here now. Now, these will give you a spike in dopamine that goes really up really quickly. Something that would have taken our ancestors probably four hours to achieve 
we can achieve that height of dopamine within the space of, I don't know, 10, 10 15 seconds, 30 seconds. You scroll through your phone, you're feeling good. If you're high, you get a dopamine rush. But the sad thing about it is our body craves and our mind craves cystosis, cystosis, which is where our body's on equal level, basically balance. We look, you know, we don't want our, our body doesn't like us going too far in any direction. It wants it to come down to a base level, and it's called cystosis, I believe is the correct name pronunciation of it is. But it's balance, right? So when you get a quick rush from something like sugary foods, alcohol, pornography, gambling online, or whatever, you get a quick rush of dopamine, and it goes up high. So come down to the base level would would be nice, which is what happens naturally. But when you take it from a natural uh, dopamine high, but when it's not a natural dopamine high, the body takes it below the baseline. Hence, you feel negative, you feel positive, um, uh, depressed, you feel anxious. You might even start um, uh, pro procrastinating about life because of that simple mistake that you've made. Because you didn't realize it. That's why we're here to learn about some of the things that work in our system or in us in psychology to help you to be a better person. But if you get a rush of dopamine from um, an artificial source or a source that's not what it wasn't made for, you will feel burnt out afterwards. And it will take you some time to get back to the base level and then again to feel good. And second of all, things like that is you could look at it like revving your engine, your car engine in the morning. I mean, really revving it without putting it into gear. Do that six, seven times a week and you know you're going to be burning out your engine. Your engine is not going to like that. That is what the dopamine system is like. You're revving it up high by having sugary foods, scrolling through your phone, looking at things that absolutely mean nothing, that are not beneficial to your outcome as a, as a human being or to the species, but you do get a rush from it. And unfortunately, after that rush is finished, you're gonna to have to go below baseline to get back to baseline. And in between those processes, you will not be feeling good. Another thing to think about when we're talking about dopamine is that it's been around for 300,000 years, if not more. Yeah, We've been using it as a species to get through this, the, the challenges that the human race has been through, which has been many, but we're still here. So being in the 21st century, being in 2025, we can get quick rushes from dopamine. But of course, as I've said, it's not the way to get it. Alcohol, drugs, pornography, social media, gambling, and online shopping will give you quick spikes. What you can do to get a, a, a rush, not a rush, a constant raise of dopamine in today's world would be making deep social connections. Because social connections is help, will help us to survive as a species. It helps us to create ourselves as people because we mix with people. That's how we've got where we are. It was no good trying to go and hunt a buffalo as I was back in the day by yourself. The buffalo would end up hunting you. Um, making deep social connections. Moving your body. I mean, of course, we always used to move. There was no such thing as cars. Even horses weren't being used 300,000 years ago. They were there. But I'm not sure that we was riding them. And if we was, we still did a hell of a lot of um, manual work, manual labour, hunting and gathering, Set, you know, creating fires, looking for somewhere to live, and obviously fighting off other tribes. So we, we lived a very, very active life, hence we didn't need any gym. But dopamine was, was being distributed in our brains and throughout our body, and we was feeling good about it, but we're not doing that now. So moving your body, eating nutritious foods, which I've already mentioned, reading a book, sleeping deeply, and taking care of, of your home, because taking care of your home is taking care of you, which is helping you to survive as a human being and helping the species to stay here. These are some of the things that you can do. Now, another thing that I suggest you can do is before you look at your phone, before you go on your tablet in the morning, go out and get some sunlight. Even though it is in the winter, go out and get some sunlight on your body, get some vitamin D in, because that's how we use the world. That's how we've been waking up for hundreds of thousands of years. We slept when it was dark. It's called the Acadia Rhythm. We slept when it was dark. We got up when it was light. That's how and dopamine starts being released because you're doing what you need to do for survival. Anything you could think of that's not a quick fix will increase your dopamine levels. Your dopamine levels will make you feel good. Your dopamine levels will help you to re do repetitive stuff that you need to do to survive 
and be the best you, you can be. It's a chemical that's there for you. It's been designed for you to use. But if you don't, again, if you didn't know about it, you do now. So do think about the consequences of spikes, what happens when you spike your dopamine, which is like revving your engine in the morning for 10, 20 minutes, you know, with no put, not putting it in gear, burning out the engine, basically, which is what you're doing with your dopamine system when you're spiking it on a regular basis with no nowhere to go. And doing it constructively, eating well, sleeping well, making good connections with people, cleaning your house, um, gardening, farming, anything you could think of that you could see as a possible way of taking care of you and the human race that's going to come after you, dopamine will like it. It will reward you. It will make you feel good. And it will also make these tasks easier for you to complete on a repetitive basis. So hopefully you found this talk useful. There's so much more research you can go and do yourself on dopamine and learn how useful it is. As I say, there's other chemicals that we, we use in our system. And over the next couple of months, I will bring them out one by one. But the first one is dopamine. Gets you going, gets you motivated, gets you to do the tasks you need to do. And it rewards you along the way and helps you to repeat them. So do share this talk with people that you think that might find it useful. Um, listen to it again so you get a clearer, clearer understanding of it because it might be a bit much. It's first time around, I don't know. Like and leave comments because I'd like to hear what you might be doing to get dopamine high in your system for a period of time, not a spike version. And I'll be back next week. So two weeks time, should I say. So do take care of yourself. Try to stay positive. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.